Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to share a simple trick with you that will really increase your signal strength on your Spark, allow you to fly the quad a lot further, and greatly improve the video streaming quality coming back from that quad when you're flying. Now, to be honest, I've talked about this before in other clips. I published one a couple of weeks ago that explained it, but I still get a lot of questions on how do I make the connection? Is there a special cable involved? Is there configuration changes needed? Or even, Rick, how come yours is working and mine isn't working? So I thought, let me go through it again. I'll start with a basic explanation of the connection topology the Spark uses, and then talk specifically about how to make this connection and show you step-by-step -step how it works. So for starters, let me talk about the connection topology. The Spark Quad is different than a lot of other DJI quads in that it's a pure Wi-Fi quad. A lot of the other DJI quads use OcuSync technology, LightBridge, LightBridge 2, which are riding on top of the ISM band or the Wi-Fi band, but they've got some special wizardry on top of that that really ensures a rock-solid connection. That's why something like a Mavic or a Phantom can fly four miles. This is based on a pure Wi-Fi connection. Now, Wi-Fi is either 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz, and if you're using your phone, you're making that Wi-Fi connection to the quad, but the transceiver inside the phone, the actual transmitter in there and the antenna system in there is not that powerful. Just it has to be that way by the FCC's regulations. So it can only broadcast that Wi-Fi signal so far. So if you're using your phone, you're really limited as far as how this can fly based on how powerful that Wi-Fi signal is. The minute you move to a controller like this, this controller is specifically built to be a very, very powerful Wi-Fi transmitter with directional antennas. So it's got high gain antennas with a Wi-Fi transmitter, again, that can broadcast on 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz, the ISM band. But the connection this can provide to the quad is way stronger and more reliable than you can do with your phone. So that's why when you're flying with your phone, you can only go so far. The minute you use this guy to connect, it's like having a boosted Wi-Fi signal. It now allows you to fly a mile, mile and a half. So that's a pretty incredible thing. The challenge is you still have to connect your phone or your tablet up to this to be able to view what's going on. And that connects over Wi-Fi typically. So you've got one Wi-Fi binding going on here. You've got a second Wi-Fi binding going on between your tablet or your phone and the controller. Now think about that. I've got a lot of noise in that Wi-Fi band already. This is pretty powerful, so it'll override a lot of that noise. This is not that powerful. So that connection between these two can be somewhat flaky. Now what I find interesting is I've never had a problem with an iPhone product. So iPhone, iPad all work great. The Apple products work great. With Android products, I've had intermittent connections. I've had issues with signal strength when I fly at long distance. I've even done tests where I flew with an Apple product over a particular course and, and marked where I was going, and then brought the quad back, put an, uh, an Android product on the controller, tried to fly the same course, and had breakup in the video and loss of signal along the way. So there's something funky in the relationship between the Android product and the controller. I don't know what it is, I can't explain it, but this fixes it. So this fix I'm gonna give you takes care of that problem. What you're gonna do in essence is eliminate the weaker Wi-Fi binding between your phone and your tablet and the controller. You're not gonna mess with this. That binding that takes place between your controller and the quad still stays the same. All we're gonna do is turn off the Wi-Fi in your device and make the connection directly to the controller. Now that does a couple of things for you that are good. Number one, not having Wi-Fi turned on on your phone or your tablet means you can use your phone or your tablet longer because that Wi-Fi transmitter really drinks up those electrons. So it's gonna really drain your battery pretty quickly. If I'm not using that, means I can use that particular device longer and I can spend more time out in the field flying, which is kind of why I'm out there. The other thing it does is it eliminates the lag because even though Wi-Fi is a very high speed connection, it was really never designed to do the kind of things we're trying to do between these two devices. So they're kind of, they're kind of gaming the system a little bit by using the Wi-Fi signal to accomplish these type of things. Putting a direct connection cable in there eliminates all that delay. So there's gonna be no delay between the Wi-Fi. There's no chance of interference. And I think that's why it gives you a much crisper video signal back from your device. And it also gives you a rock solid connection signal between whatever display device you're using and the controller. So there are a couple of things you need to do that. You can't just directly connect the cable up between your phone or your tablet and the controller. You need what's called a dongle, which is an adapter to allow you to make that connection. And I'll show you how to do all that. I'll also point you in the direction of where you can find the things you need. They're not expensive. And uh, having them with you, I think would greatly improve your flying experience. So stay tuned for a minute and I'll actually show you how to make the connection. Then I'll come back and wrap up with a couple final comments. Before I show you the new connection method, I thought I'd take a minute and explain how you would normally do it over Wi-Fi through the standard procedure. So the first thing you'll do is turn on both devices. Once the controller starts to power up, you'll notice a red flashing light up here. That's indicating the controller is searching for the spark 
and it's actually looking across all the available Wi-Fi signals for the strongest connection point between the two devices. That'll eventually go red when it finds it and locks in, and then once it stays red, it'll turn green. When it turns green, it means this controller right now is bound to your spark and it's picked the strongest signal it can find in your area. Now, to be honest, if you're in an area with a lot of Wi-Fi interference or a lot of noise, that could take up to 30 seconds to pick the right signal and actually bind. Now, the trick is you've still got to connect up whatever display device you're using to the controller, and that's typically done through Wi-Fi. The way you would do that is go into your settings menu, turn on Wi-Fi. That'll immediately start searching for the Wi-Fi signals in your area. Spark RC is the remote control and it'll make a connection to that. Now, if you've done it once, you've entered a password already, it'll make that connection automatically. Once that connects, you can then go into your DJI GO 4 app, and it'll make a connection to your quad. Now, I've got the quad over on a table pretty far away from me because it's fairly noisy when it's running and I'm trying to record, and I've got all kinds of compass errors too because I'm in the house. But what it's doing is basically looking at a spark box and a drone mug there from uh, Drone Valley. So anyway, I'm making the connection. Now, the new method eliminates that binding between the Wi-Fi on the controller and the actual remote device. And the way you do that is make a connection between this micro USB connection on the bottom of your controller and whatever you're connecting to on your device. So in my case, it's an Apple product, so I've got a lightning connection. You may be using an Android device that has either a micro USB connection or it may be a USB-C connection. It doesn't really matter. The trick is you can't make a direct connection between these two. It'd be great if you could, but you have to establish what's called a host peripheral relationship. The way you do that is through a dongle like this. This dongle will convert the micro USB connection on the bottom of your controller to a standard female USB connection here, which is a full size USB. Now in my case, I'm using an Apple product, so I'm gonna use the standard Apple cable. I connect up the USB here, and then once I make this connection, I connect up the Apple side over here, and I've made the connection to the controller. Now it's gonna complain because it doesn't like that little dongle on there. You can dismiss that, it works just fine. So that's all set. Now let me just show you that. I'll turn off the Wi-Fi here and show you that I've still got a connection. So let me get back into my settings. I'll turn off the Wi-Fi. I'll go back to the DJI GO 4 It takes a second and then it'll re recalibrate and actually make the connection again. So right now, there is no Wi-Fi signal and I'm making the connection through that cable. Now I would normally snap this into the handles and go off and fly for the day. The challenge with that is you can see all this extra cable that's hanging underneath. So I've got to ball it up and stick it behind. So for a while I was searching for a better solution and we actually have a company that makes cables for us now. So what I've come out with is a shorter cable. It's a 20 centimeter cable that replaces this really long cable here. And again, you can use the standard cable. It just makes it a lot neater and it plugs into the side just like you would with the long cable. And then you've got a really nice, again, it's complaining about that dongle. You've got a really nice handle over here to hang on to. You've still got a little bit of cable dangling, but this works out pretty well. And that's how I've been flying for the last couple of weeks. Recently, I discovered another type of connector that my manufacturer produces that shortens this even further. So essentially what it does is replace this dongle with a very specialized dongle, a very small dongle like this, that slides right into the end of this USB connection, and then will plug into the bottom of this controller like that. So you can see now I've eliminated all that slop down there completely. It's a really clean connection that plugs in here, and I've got my connection up top. So it's, it's amazing if you spend a little bit of time playing with these things, you'll find you have an evolution of how things progress. And I think this is like the perfect solution. Now, again, on the website, we have these cables manufactured for us. We have that USB dongle manufactured for us. So we can sell you this whole thing as a kit for both Apple, for Android, both the micro USB and the full-sized uh, USB-C, or I should say the miniature USB-C if you need that as well. So, but again, you don't have to use any of this stuff. You can use a standard dongle with the original cables and it'll work just fine. You just have to ball up all that extra cable behind. But that essentially is it. And again, what I like about this is it gives me the ability to eliminate the Wi-Fi connection between these two guys, which on the Android side of the house, I really believe is introducing a lot of the glitchy problems I'm getting with my video streaming back and breaking up and losing signal connections much closer than I should. So even though I fly with the Apple iPad mini four more often than anything else, and it works great over the Wi-Fi connection, when I move to an Android device, I've had a lot of trouble with it, and this has solved it for me. So hopefully that makes sense. Hang on and we'll get back with some final thoughts. Okay, that's it for this clip, and I hope you found that helpful. It is pretty straightforward once you've seen it done a couple of times, 
Now, if you need help with any of the cables that I've shown you in this demonstration, I have them all available on our website. We have these custom made for us. So I have the 20 centimeter, which is the shorter cable for both an Android device and an Apple device. This is really good if you're gonna mount it in the handles because it's just the right exact length. If you're gonna mount it in some type of tablet holder, I have a 30 centimeter cable, again, for Apple and Android that allows you to make that connection. I have the dongles if you wanna use a straight dongle like this. I also have a specialized dongle, which I showed you a minute ago, that slips into the end of the USB connection. What I like about this one so much is once I slide it in the end, I've now got a micro USB to whatever connection I need for my phone. That nice little short cable keeps it up and out of the way. So it's not going to be dangling down and banging into things. So any of these you need, um, they're available on the website. Again, uh, just hit the links below and you can find them there. I'm sure you can find them all over the internet, but these are a bit sketchy. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. All the ones that we carry, we've tested. And again, the cables are custom made for us. So we've got some pretty good pricing on those. Anyway, that's all I had for today. If there's something I missed or you have questions about anything I've discussed, drop them in the comments below. I'm absolutely doing my best to stay on top of those comments. It's just a lot of questions and comments coming in and I have to divide my time between answering the questions and actually creating clips. And I like to get out and fly every now and then too. So give me a little time for that. But that's pretty much it for today. Thank you so much for watching these clips. We've watched the subscriber count seem to go up almost every day, which is a fantastic thing. It's very inspirational to me to see people are enjoying these clips and they're finding value in them. And as I always say, I'll continue to make them as long as you guys are enjoying them. So until next time, happy flying.